really, really excited because we have a very special guest who is joining us for this um, for this webinar on intonation. Um, so, Colleen, if you would be able to show your webcam and say hi to everybody. Um, Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Colleen Myers, and um, I'm also very, very excited to be co-presenting with Andrea today. So um, I'll be talking to you a little bit later after um, she finishes her part of the seminar today. Thanks. And this is this is very exciting because when I was a master's student at Hamlin, Colleen was the teacher who taught my um, phonetics and phonology course and then was one of my advisors on my capstone on pronunciation. Right. So yeah. really, really excited to have Colleen joining us today. Yeah, we go back a ways. It's, we do at this point, yes, it's been a while. <laughs> All right, so we're going to ask people to keep, um, keep your videos off and keep yourself muted for, for this. We'll have some points where we'll be doing chat. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to have time to do a breakout session. Um, if you have any questions um, about technology, please send a message um, to Gail Rutan um, in that chat box, a private message to Gail. All right, so let's dive in. So as Patsy said, this is the third in our pronunciation webinar series. Um, we went over voice quality settings in November, word stress in February, and today we are tackling intonation. Um, and at the end of the webinar, I'll show you where you can find um, webinar one and two, the recordings of webinar one and two, and where webinar three will also be stored on the Minnesota um, ABE Professional Development YouTube page. So our objectives for this webinar, we have several. Um, connect with other adult ESL teachers who are interested in teaching pronunciation. Establish guiding principles for pronunciation instruction. Understand what intonation is and how it impacts pronunciation and develop a plan for integrating intonation instruction into the classroom and virtual instruction. Um, so we do know that um, instruction right now looks very different than it did during when we did webinars one and two, um, which is again why we're super fortunate to have Colleen joining us because Colleen has been doing um, and has a long experience um, doing virtual one-on-one -on -one instruction with people on pronunciation. So we're going to get a chance to learn from her some tips, um, some recommendations, and some really specific activities that you can do for intonation when you are teaching it online. So why are we here? So just some background information on kind of getting us all on board. Um, that pronunciation should not be as fixing, pro seen as fixing problems, but rather as teaching how to speak. Um, it makes little sense to immerse beginning level learners into the grammar and vocabulary of English, but then leave them to struggle on their own with the pronunciation. Pronunciation difficulties can lead to a loss of confidence to interact in spoken English, which can affect further language development. This lack of progress in the second language acquisition can ultimately contribute to social isolation and limit educational work opportunities. So we talk a lot in the field how pronunciation does not get the attention that it deserves um, because it really impacts how people are seen and their ability to move forward to communicate with the people around them effectively. And it can really have an impact on people's confidence levels. And it's generally not something that people are going to pick up on their own. It needs to be explicitly taught. So just some guiding principles to keep in mind whenever you're thinking about integrating pronunciation instruction. Um, take a systematic approach to pronunciation and allow students to advance through each developmental stage before moving on to the next. Um, and with that, we don't mean um, teach this feature first and then this feature second. What we're talking about is um, the same way we would teach grammar, uh, giving students the opportunity to learn what the feature is in with pronunciation and be able to hear it then moving on to very controlled practice, onto less controlled practice into communicative work. Um, the same way we do when we introduce, again, when we introduce anything. 
pronunciation should be embedded within the curriculum, um, not taught as its own special topic, but something that's just a regular part of the routines and teaching language. Teach pronunciation explicitly. Like I said before, it is not something that people usually pick up on their own, especially if the feature isn't present in their first language. Um, so be prepared to explain what it is, um, do some activities and teach it explicitly the same way you teach grammar points explicitly. Don't wait to start teaching pronunciation. Teach it from the beginning levels. Um, you know, I had, I've, I've said this in other webinars, a learner in a beginning level class. I, I did not teach pronunciation for the first few years. I was an English language instructor. And I had a beginning level learner tell me, um, teacher, only you can understand me. And I realized that I hadn't been teaching pronunciation and I could understand them, my beginning level students, but when they went out into the community, other people couldn't. And I'd really been doing them a disservice. So that's when I started integrating pronunciation instruction into my teaching every day. Prioritize pronunciation needs and focus features that will have the greatest impact on intelligibility. And focus on intelligibility, not accent reduction. We're not trying to get rid of anyone's accent. There is no problem with having an accent. It's not the villain. Um, what we are doing is trying to help people develop some, some tips and some tricks, a, a toolbox for speaking that they can choose whether or not they want to use it. All right, so let's dig into our topic today. Um, so we are going to be looking at the feature of intonation. What is intonation? What are we talking about? So intonation is the pattern or melody of pitch changes in connected speech in English. So it's about how we say things rather than what we say. And it's often referred to as the music of speech, that up and down and the changing pitch. So what does intonation do? What is, what is the purpose of it in the English language? Um, it can be used to emphasize or draw attention to certain words. Um, so for example, we would use it when we're contrasting to different, um, when we're drawing attention to new information. You know, somebody, if someone asks, is my order ready? Sorry, only half your order is ready. So drawing attention to that new information of half. Um, to contrast between two different options. So do you want to talk on the phone or on Zoom? We emphasize, use intonation to emphasize different options. Um, and we can also use it to really kind of have fun and change the meaning. So listen to how much the meaning changes when I read these sentences. I told you to call me. 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 So that emphasis or drawing attention to certain words is a big part of intonation. We use it in a lot of different ways when we're speaking English. Intonation can also be used to signal thought groups or break speech into smaller, more digestible chunks. Um, here's a great example of what that sounds like. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. Intonation can also be used to signal the difference between a statement and a question or distinguish between information question and a yes or no question. So I'm going to play this clip. I won't, I'm not going to play it all the way through. Um, but I want you to listen to the sounds, um, listen to this conversation, and hear how that rising and falling intonation indicates statements versus questions.
All right, so I won't keep going with that, but um, as you can hear, um, even very young children are able to pick up on that pattern of rising intonation followed by falling intonation for a statement versus question. Um, intonation can also be used to convey additional information about the speaker's moods, feelings, emotions, or attitude. So again, I'm gonna play a short clip that just emphasizes what I mean when I'm talking about conveying that additional information about mood, feelings, emotions, or attitudes. Oh. Call you back. Is this my car? State Farm knows that for every one of what? those moments, this is ridiculous. There's one of these. Is this my car? What? This is ridiculous. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Shut up. Shut up. Ah! <laughs> That's why State Farm is there. What a day. With car insurance for when things go wrong. What a day. But also here with car loans <laughs> to help life go right. State Farm. Right, so intonation, we use it a lot in English to convey a lot of additional information um, that isn't necessarily conveyed in the word. So back to that, it's about how we say it instead of what we say. Um, so why is intonation important? Well, it carries a high communicative load in terms of structuring information, providing learners with prosaic cues and rapport building between speakers. It acts as a grammar of cohesion, pulling it all, pulling it all together. Um, people assume that the basic signals of rhythm and melody are a natural part of all human speech, but they tend to be very language specific. Um, and we will talk about that a little bit more later when we're talking about things we can do with lower level learners and some theater and some different theater activities. So the primary goal of intonation instruction should be communication proficiency rather than teaching the mechanics of intonation. Um, so rather than teaching people uh, if you want to sound, if you want to sound interested, you should make your voice sound like this. Um, having people practice through watching videos, analyzing, trying it out themselves is a much better way to teach um, than just trying to teach a series of rules. Um, and Colleen will be getting a little bit more into that later because uh, as you can see, she is one of the authors on that article. So digging into how do we teach intonation to English learners? Um, so thinking about that idea of rather than teaching the, the mechanics, we wanna teach people to be able to first hear it and then be able to produce it themselves. Um, so we are going to look at a video of Suzanne McCurdy, a colleague of mine, Suzanne McCurdy, um, who is doing an act, a mirroring activity with a group of um, high intermediate adult ESL speakers, and they're doing a project called mirroring. So they're going to be watching a video of someone who is a fluent English speaker, and then mirroring, literally, um, making themselves sound and look like the speaker in order to practice a bunch of different series parts of intonation. So in this first clip, we are going to watch Suzanne um, help the learners identify the pauses or the thought groups and where those fall, and then identify which word in each thought group is stressed and receives that emphasis to make it really stand out. Um, so I'll be playing these clips, and then also when you get the PDF um, is sent out with your CEUs, there will also be the clip if you want to go and watch the whole thing, because we won't be watching all of this. And again, very excited to have Colleen here because um, mirroring a, a video is a project that she has done quite a bit of, had quite a bit of experience on and does, has done a lot of work and has written on it a lot. All right, so I'm gonna start this video. First, look at your handout. Do you see how there are lines? Yeah. yeah. We'll call these chunks, okay? Chunks. Strangers is a chunk. They are everywhere is a 
chunk, okay? A chunk, okay? Every chunk in English has a super strong word, okay? A super strong word. And right now, let's listen to each chunk and listen for the strong word, okay? Does everyone have a highlighter? Highlight the strong word in the chunk. First chunk is strangers, right? There's only one word. So which word will we highlight? Strangers, right. So go ahead and highlight strangers. Strangers. Okay. Now they are everywhere. One word is strong. Let's listen. They are everywhere. You think everywhere? Yes. So highlight everywhere. Why do we have those strong words? How does it help us communicate? It emphasizes something. Right. Why do I want to emphasize? Why do I want to make something strong? So someone can understand better. Yeah, because the definition you may understand what kind of Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does she think is important? If you look at what's highlighted. To learn something new. Say that again? To learn something new. To learn something new. What else does she think is important? Opportunities. 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 Yeah. Learning. Experience. To learn. Experience. Experience. Experiences. That's what she thinks is important. So, what does she do with her voice? She raises, she raises it or uses stress. Strong, yeah, yeah stress. Strong. Yeah, strong. We can say strong. Good. So, in English, that's how we show what's important. All right. So, you got a chance to see Suzanne um, helping students get through. Um, understanding first off what thought groups are and then identifying which word in each thought group is stressed. So I want to take a minute and check out the chat. Okay. Um, and yes, all of the, I'll make sure that all of the um, clips for the videos, including that really adorable baby video and um, are in the PDF. Um, and I will also be sending out a list of all of the um, different references that I have, the different resources that I have. So I'll send out a reference list of, along with that if people want to go back and do some of their own research. All right. So mirroring fluent speakers. Um, the other, the next thing that we're going to see Suzanne doing um, is imitating movements to help emphasize stressed words. So let's see, take a look and see what this looks like when she is doing the instruction with this group of learners. So remember, they're doing the mirroring, not just with their voice, but she is also having them um, do mirroring with their bodies. Notice her body movements. When does she move her arms? When does she move her arms? With what words? Strangers. They are everywhere. And we've always been told, don't talk to strangers. When does she move her hands? Right. Say that again. Everywhere. Opportunity, right. Yep. Look at your paper. When does she move her arms? The highlighted words, right. I'm not sure in your languages, but in English, we listen with our ears, but we also listen with our eyes. We watch someone. So she'll move her body when it's important. 
Yeah. Do you do that in your language? Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. We do. We yeah? Not anymore. yeah? We do. That's you do. Good. So you can also use that in English to help people understand. Maybe they can't exactly understand your words. You can move your body to help. If you are able to, please stand up. Let's imitate her, OK? So we'll make our voice strong when she's strong, and we'll move our body like she moves her body. Okay? Okay, here we go with the first word is strangers. Strangers. Okay, everybody? Strangers. Strangers. Again, strangers. Strangers. Good. Ready? They are everywhere. Good. They are everywhere. Good. And we've always been told, don't talk to strangers. Good. Right. Stop, right? Don't talk to strangers, everybody. Don't talk to strangers. Story that you've never heard before. Let's really see that one. She's bigger than that. An opportunity to hear a story that you've Never heard before. Let's see it. Never. Bigger. Never. That's right. Good job, guys. All right. So with Suzanne, we're seeing how she was getting learners to imitate the movement to help emphasize the stressed words. And I really love how you can see how some of the learners in the class are really, really getting into it. Um, and how doing those movements um, naturally makes their voices stronger. Um, so going back to uh, what we talked about before, um, this is part of that getting the learners to notice and figure things out, to, to be able to hear and see how intonation works, um, rather than just telling them this is how it works. Okay. Um, so next part of the video we're going to watch, um, there's going to be two different things Suzanne's going to be drawing people's attention to. They're going to be identifying the rising and falling intonation in the video, and they're going to discuss the meaning behind those intonation patterns, what it sounds like. So let's watch and see what this looks like in action. Tell me my car's gone. Tell me the police took my car. I don't know. Just say, the police took your car, Suzanne. Say that to me. Yeah, say, you, they towed your car. My car is gone? How do I feel? Shock, right? Yeah, shock, surprise. How about if I come up to you? You're a student? Yes. I am oh, so why does my voice go up? You're a student? I'm not, you're not sure? I'm not sure. Yeah, unsure. Okay, what, when my voice goes down, Maria has three brothers. Say it again. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're a student. Yeah, I'm sure, right? So if it goes up, maybe I'm, I have a question or I'm surprised. I'm not sure. Good. We'll listen to chunks. Is she going up or down? Okay. And we've always been told, don't talk to strangers. Don't talk to strangers. Down, down. Mm hmm And on this one, don't talk to don't talk to strangers. We have three, right? Yeah. Uh. Don't? 
Don't. Don't. This goes up because it's stress. But the end? Down. Down. If it went up, it would go, don't talk to strangers? Don't talk to strangers. Are you seeing a pattern with her voice? What are your arrows doing on your paper? Showing us the... There's a down? Mm -hmm. Down? Mm. Down. down? Yep, the up is stress. The up is not the intonation. Yeah, it's just the stress. She goes down a lot. Look, how does she feel about what she's saying? Serious. She's serious. She's... She's not scared to the stranger. Yeah. It's like I invite, invite mm -hmm. people to don't be child with the stranger. Right, right. We can learn something from them. Yeah. Uh, over now I can talk to them. Yeah, she's yeah. saying we don't need to be scared of strangers. Is she unsure? No. Or is she sure? sure. She's sure. Mm hmm. If her voice goes up, don't talk to strangers? An opportunity? Then she would be. Confused. Mm -hmm. Strangers. Strangers. Now let's do a hand for going down. Strangers. Strangers. Okay. All right. So in that portion of the video, um, we were able to see the learners identifying the rising and falling intonation, but then also talking about what that means like when someone has rising intonation what do they sound like versus falling intonation and there are some pretty um, applicable real life situations where this is going to be important for people to be able to use and know um, so I'm going to ask people if you could go to the chat box really quickly would you be able to type in um, what are some situations where it would be important to be able to distinguish between that rising intonation and the falling intonation in real life, um, where it would be helpful for learners to be able to have control over that and impact how they're heard. Last item in a list, mm -hmm, indicating I'm finished. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, I need you to buy oranges, apples, and bananas. That falling intonation says, I'm done. Um, can anybody else? Yeah, rising intonation means there are more choices I'm not mentioning. Um, a person of authority giving a directive. So if somebody is managing at work or they need to tell somebody what to do, mm -hmm, they're gonna have that falling intonation. Anything else that people can think? Real life application for being able to could have control over that falling versus rising intonation. Any situations? When asking, are you talking to me? <laughs> Do you need that blood now? What and when and who? <laughs> Great. Mm -hmm. Instructions, various questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can also think like in a job interview, being able to sound confident, to project confidence with having that sure falling intonation at the end of statements instead of rising intonation that can make people sound like they're not, don't quite trust themselves. Mm -hmm. Ooh, here's a big one for right now from Rebecca, talking over the phone when the listener can't see your body language. So that's some, this is something we could be working on right now. You know, if you're talking to somebody and you want to make sure that they understand this is the answer, you need to make sure your intonation is going down. Good. All right, so I'm going to move us on to the last thing 
um, that we're going to see the class with Suzanne do, which is put it all together. So they've worked with thought groups and emphasizing specific words that are important. Um, they've imitated the movements. They've um, identified the rising and falling intonation in the video, and now they're going to put it all together. So let's see what that mean, looks like. Take turns reading her words and trying to imitate her movements and her voice movement. And try to bring your voice up here. Oops. Don't talk to stranger. That is don't talk to stranger. But I beg it to be fair. Every stranger come with every stranger come with an opportunity. Every stranger comes with an opportunity. Good. They up and down. Yeah. An opportunity to learn something. They are everywhere. They are everywhere. We, they are everywhere. And we've always been told. And we always been told. But you have to use your hands. And we always been told. Mm -hmm. But I beg to differ. But I beg to differ. Every stranger comes with an opportunity. Every stranger comes with an opportunity. An opportunity to have an experience you've never had. An opportunity to have an experience you never had. Or hear a story that you've never heard before. Or hear a story that you never heard before. All right. So that was that last part, putting it all together. And so I want to go back to that chat. Yep, he's a motivational speaker in the making. Um, and how you can see how people are getting into that. And the one thing I want to point out is um, I've heard people say, well, it's so hard to teach this when um, the learner and I can't see each other. And that the learner in the, the last part of that clip is actually blind. Um, but you can see that he is still able to really use that up and down intonation, what a difference that makes. Um, and the fact they've been talking about using gestures, he's incorporating the gestures into, into his speech. So this is an example of what the mirroring project could look like when you are using a video. Um, TED Talks are wonderful for this. Um, but you can use pretty much any video as long as you have someone who's a fluent English speaker who is using good, clear intonation. Um, before we move on, I just want to pause and see if anyone has any questions about doing the mirroring. So what we saw in the video with imitating a speaker and using that to teach and have people practice and use the different parts of intonation. So if you have any questions, go ahead and chat them in that chat box. All right, so if there aren't any questions, um, and we will be pausing in a while, a little while for people to talk about how could you use this yourself in your own teaching after we go through some more, some more different activities for intonation. Um, so if anything comes up, um, just go ahead and type it in the chat box and we'll be able to get to it um, later. All right, so when it comes to teaching intonation, um, we just saw an example of somebody, a teacher using a TED Talk with their learners to work on lots of different aspects of intonation and get them to try it out in their own speech. Um, the great thing about trying it out is when you do this um, and people get to actually hear it and experience it, um, kind of taking on the persona of somebody else it becomes easier for them to then transfer that into their own speech. And when they know how it makes it sound, it's, there's definitely a, a lot of power in that. 
well, that speaker sounded confident and I need to be in a situation, I'm in a situation where I need to sound confident. So I'm gonna use some of those intonation patterns. Um, but what do you do when you have lower level speakers who might ha not have that high level of language to be able to talk about the intonation um, and get caught up on what does it mean if you're watching one of those higher level videos like a TED talk? So I'm going to have us, I'm going to talk through some different activities we can do that are appropriate for lower level speakers um, to help them be able to practice intonation. Um, and the first one is uh, some theater games. So um, could I get, I think it might be easiest if we demonstrated this and I didn't talk about this ahead of time. Um, but Colleen, could I get you to turn on your camera and unmute yourself? Um, so I'm, I I'm, can't remember if I learned this activity from you, um, but it's called nonsense conversations. Okay. Because sometimes when, especially with lower level learners, you can get kind of caught up in what does each word mean? And it's hard for learners to hear the pattern. Mm. Um, so kind of like we saw those babies doing in the previous video, um, you and I are gonna have a conversation, but okay. we're just gonna say the word blah, blah, blah. All right. All right, so I'll start. Blah, blah. Blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Mm, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah. <laughs> All right. So um, that's an example of a kind of a simple theater game you can do where you can just have people partnered up having a conversation back and forth to start to play around with the rising and falling intonation and how they respond to it. Um, and this I found um, learners have a lot of fun with because there is um, some, some opportunity to, well, what do English speakers sound like? You don't have to worry about doing their words, just what do they sound like? Um, and I've really heard people have a lot, a lot of fun with that. Um, and then when we go to doing a dialogue and we apply some of those rising and falling, people feel, seem to feel a little bit more confident. Um, another thing we can do, and if you are in a place where you're gonna speak, I'm gonna ask you to do this at home um, and just, just humor me, just try it out with me. Um, but what I'd like you to do is introduce yourself. So little 10 seconds, hi, my name is, I'm from, um, and I'll, I'll do it first, and then I'll have you do it by yourself. So you're gonna be talking to your computer by yourself, um, but I want you to change your voice. So the first time I want you to introduce yourself, and I want you to introduce yourself like you're incredibly, incredibly excited. You are so happy and excited to be introducing yourself. Um, so I'll do an example, and then I want you to try it out. Hi, my name is Andrea, and I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I work for Literacy Minnesota. All right, now you go ahead, keep yourself muted, but do it at the top of your lungs. Be super excited as you're introducing yourself to your computer. All right, and then I would like you to type in the chat um, what was your voice doing to show that you were excited? Yep, so going up and up and up, mm -hmm. speaking higher, a uh, higher pitch, um, speaking a little bit more quickly, getting louder. Mm -hmm. Yep, louder. Mm -hmm. Great. So an octave higher, yep. So speaking considerably higher, and then I see some smiling and raising my eyebrows and raising the voice, raising the pitch of the voice. So um, a lot of English speakers, when they want to indicate that they're excited, use the intonation to indicate they're excited, they're going to raise the pitch of their voice 
um, so that their voice is going higher. They're going to have more rising intonation, not necessarily at the end of the statement, but kind of in the middle. My name is Andrea. Um, to show that they are happy, excited, and enthusiastic. So this is something that I'll do with learners where I'll say, you know, pretend you're an English speaker and you're really, really happy, you're really excited. What do you sound like? And then we talk about if you're in a situation and you want someone to know you're excited about something, here's what you can do. And then I'll give you them some phrases and we'll practice. All right, um, so I'm gonna ask you to do this again. Um, this time I want you to introduce yourself and I want you to introduce yourself like you are incredibly, incredibly bored. You are so bored. Oh, my name is Andrea. I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I work for Literacy Minnesota. So try that out yourself and then type in the chat box. What is your voice doing? All right, so going down, we have a lot of falling intonation, down low, um, a little bit more monotone, going down at the end, speaking more slowly. Mm -hmm. the, the overall energy is down and then the tone of the voice is shifted down mm -hmm. or, and more of a monotone. So less of that rise and fall and more steady with falls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uninspired, great. So again, something you practice with your learners. If you're an English speaker and you want to tell people that you're bored and you're not interested in what they say, how do you make yourself sound? Okay, so in English, if you are talking in a, in a monotone voice, if you have lots of falling, you sound low energy, maybe a lot of pauses, it sounds like you aren't interested in the conversation. Um, so getting people to be able to have a stronger perception of how um, the listener might be perceiving them. Okay, and I'm gonna ask you to do one more. So last one, um, hopefully if you are, um, have other people in the house, they, they don't think that you're completely lost your marbles from sitting on Zoom calls all day at this point. Um, but I want you to do one more. So last one is I like, would like you to be very, very angry. You are absolutely furious as you are introducing yourself. You are so upset. So please introduce yourself to your computer like you are extremely angry and then chat in the chat box. What do you do? Someone say it's hard, curt words, so cutting it out. There's shout, we're louder, still using a lower pitch. Mm -hmm. Anything else? A lot of pressure. So we're doing a lot of emphasis on the words. Each word has a lot of emphasis, which makes you sound certain. Mm -hmm. You might be using a lower tone, so deepening your voice a little bit, so people know that you're serious and you sound authoritative. Emphasize each word because they're all important to me. Brows down, short breaths. <laughs> Maybe you sound disgusted. Mm -hmm. So this is something that, again, practicing it. If you are an English speaker and you want to sound angry, what do you sound like? What does that sound like? Um, and in Minnesota, where, where I taught in um, South Minneapolis, I had a lot, a lot of learners who were native Somali speakers from East Africa, native Somali speakers. Um, and one of the things a lot of my learners expressed to me was frustration at people they would interact with who were um, native English speakers or speakers of other language, thinking that they were angry when they weren't angry um, and, or thinking they were frustrated or getting really defensive. Um, a woman once told me, I was talking to my friend on a bus in Somali 
Um, and this man turned to us and said, you need to stop fighting. And we weren't fighting. We, we were talking about shopping. Like what, basically she was saying, what's wrong <laughs> with, with people where they think we're fighting? Um, so this is one of those really interesting things that we said, um, why it needs to be taught explicitly, because we naturally are going to use the intonation from our first language, intonation patterns from our first language. And so for a lot of East African speakers, for Somali speakers in particular, when speaking, there's kind of this equal emphasis on each syllable. And to a lot of a lot of ears from different cultures, and I would say particularly Minnesota ears, um, it can come across as being very aggressive and sounding like people are angry, they're upset, they're being aggressive um, when it's just an intonation pattern. So um, working with learners, we would talk about that and then we would practice. Like you don't have to change the way you speak every time, but you know when you are asking for help. Think about doing the up and down, like, excuse me, can you help me? Um, and how that changes just the very start of the interaction and how that can change the perception of the person that you're speaking to. Um, so these are some theater games. You can do it with all levels. I did the, do them with very, very low level learners. And there really is a lot of conversation that we can have about, oh, so what are some common intonation patterns in English? Um, and why should I be aware of the way that I sound? Because that can impact how, how people hear me and understand me. All right, so just looking at some other activities for all levels. Um, you can do some simple rising and falling intonation practice with statements or a question. So you like chicken versus you like chicken. Um, and when I would do this with learners, they would practice reading sentences and their partner would show them hold up either a question mark or hold up a period um, to show them if they were doing a question or a statement. And with higher level learners, you could absolutely have them doing a response back indicating that they're answering a question or that they're affirming a statement. Um, so let's just practice these together. You like chicken? Or, sorry, you like chicken. You like chicken? He is fine. He is fine? She has three children. She has three children? It is correct. It is correct? So very simple. You can do it with lots of different levels, but even at very, very low levels, it's some good practice with that falling or the rising intonation and how that impacts um, how you are understood. Um, and then the last one I wanted to draw people's attention to that is appropriate for all levels is just conducting a dialogue. And I was actually doing it in the last one when I was doing the, um, you are fine, <laughs> he is fine, he is fine. Um, but having people do some arm gestures to indicate the falling or the rising intonation. Um, so I know in when I taught beginning level classes, we did a lot, a lot of dialogues um, in our beginning level classes. This is something very simple that you can just add in whenever you are doing a dialogue to show that falling and rising intonation. Um, and you can use it for some patterns when you're doing like this versus this. Do you like cats or dogs? I need some bananas, apples, and oranges. Um, but have people practice do, getting some kinesthetic movement in to help them remember how the rising and the falling patterns work in a dialogue. Very easy to add in. All right, so it looks like we are going to have some time to do a small group breakout. So Patsy, um, I think we have, we have 33 people um, and there are the three, um, Colleen and you and I and Gail. So if you could make, um, I think nine rooms, yeah. breakout rooms, I'm gonna have us do breakout rooms. So I just wanna go over a couple of things before we go into breakout rooms. And if you haven't used Zoom before and done the breakout rooms, um, the breakout rooms are 
fantastic way. Um, I know teachers who are using Zoom and then have volunteers who are helping students practice. Um, so when you get into the breakout room, you are going to want to click on that little microphone on the bottom of, bottom of your screen so that you are unmuted. And if you want, you can start your video. Um, you do not have to turn your video on. You are allowed to leave your video off and to just talk. Um, and if you need help, if you go to the bottom of the screen, you can request help. Um, and Patsy, as the host, can pop in and help you if you're having any issues. Um, so we're just going to do about four minutes in the breakout room, and then we'll move on to Colleen's portion of uh, the webinar. Okay. But thinking about how can you integrate intonation practice into your teaching? So what you just saw and the suggestions you just saw. Um, and I did just copy and paste that question um, into the chat. So um, when you are in your breakout rooms, if you open up the chat, um, you will be able to see that, to see that prompt. So you'll have four minutes in your small group. How can you integrate intonation practice into your teaching? All right, off we go. Hello. Oh, wait, I missed share. OK, there I go. All right, thanks, Colleen. We can see it. And if you want to um, um, make sure people oh. can see your video, too, yes. I'm going to go ahead and turn my video off right now. OK. All right, so, um, well, first of all, thank you, Andrea. You came up with um, or shared a lot of really interesting and fun ways to practice intonation. So um, I'm learning as well today. And uh, so thanks again. Okay, so for my part of the seminar today, I'm gonna to be talking about um, also teaching intonation and sharing some uh, techniques for virtual tutoring. So as uh, Andrea mentioned, I've been uh, tutoring using uh, Zoom and Skype for a while now, tutoring pronunciation. So first of all, let's see, what's my, my screen isn't advancing here. So Colleen, usually if you hover towards the bottom, um, an arrow should appear, anything? No, I can just see a wheel going around. Uh-oh. Try clicking on it. Yeah, it's just, it's like my computer is frozen. Let's see, let me start again. So I'll do okay. stop yeah, no share. Problem. Okay, uh, let's see, let's do this one. Okay, maybe this will work this time. And if you need, I have your PowerPoint downloaded, the version from yesterday and I can share too if, if we need. Okay, it says it's not responding. I wonder if I had two open because I had one ready to go. Oops, it doesn't like that either. Well, why don't, here, let me pull it up. Um, I can share, um, here, I can share your, I can share your PowerPoint and then just advance for you. Okay. Um, well, wait a minute. Let me try one more time okay. here. Okay, so screen sharing has stopped. Let's see. Colleen? Uh, yes, I can, but I can't see it on the whole screen. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Okay, I've got it. All right, so um, just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm retired. I was an education specialist at the Center for Educational Innovation at the University of Minnesota, and also 
um, the co-author of pronunciation materials for non-native speakers of English, and finally, um, a TESOL presenter. So for the last couple of years, um, I presented as part of a panel on teaching pronunciation, and I've done the intonation segment. So just a little bit about myself. So on to the next slide. Before I start a unit on intonation, and again, um, I'm used to working with um, higher level students, although I've also worked with lower level as well. Um, once students know what intonation is, so we just briefly talk about it, I'd like to start by showing this clip from the Big Bang Theory. And I asked them to uh, notice Leonard and Sheldon and pay attention to two things. One is um, the intonation patterns they notice, and secondly, the nonverbal communication and how that impacts their ability to communicate with each other. So as you watch, if you want to just chat down some things in the, or write down some things in the chat box. So go ahead, Andrea. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm Leonard Hofstetter. I called you about the apartment. You said it. I know what I said. I know what you said. I know what my mother said on March 5th, 1992. <laughs> what is the sixth noble gas? What? You said you're a scientist. What is the sixth noble gas? Uh, radon? Are you asking me or telling me? <laughs> telling you? <laughs> telling you. All right. Okay, so um, in the chat box, what did you notice um, about either one of the characters, their intonation or their body language? And actually, well, maybe with the time, let's just move on um, so that it doesn't take too long. So if you want to go to the next screen, Andrea, so in terms of faulty intonation, uh, first of all, yeah, so somebody put Sheldon stiffened when he thought Leonard wasn't sure of his answer. Exactly. Um, also, uh, Sheldon's tone of voice. So getting back to what Andrea had us practice before, um, when you sound kind of angry or you know, upset, he sounds abrupt, he sounds off-putting. And then the next thing, he doesn't make eye contact or use facial expressions, which especially the eye contact is very important in US culture. And the facial expressions I'm gonna talk about a little bit later because they're important for intonation. So not only the gestures, but the face. Leonard, on the other hand, um, also has his challenges. So the first thing is he uses a rising intonation when he's answering. So he says radon, um, because he's probably not sure, but of course, Sheldon uh, doesn't accept that and thinks that, um, you know, he sounds like that Leonard sounds like he's asking a question rather than telling the answer. The next one, um, also he, Leonard uses the rising intonation again when he's clarifying. So if you remember, he says, telling you, telling you. And one thing I think is really cool about this is the way that um, he moves his head. It's almost like he moves it up for the rising intonation. Telling you, telling you, after um, Sheldon looks at him askance. And then finally, um, that rising intonation and the response that Sheldon gives makes Leonard sound unsure of himself. So again, this just emphasizes for students how important intonation is. And one of the reasons that I want to emphasize this is that um, several writers and teachers and those of you who have taught intonation yourself know that sometimes students will say, oh, intonation isn't, isn't important. But this shows how important it is and that even native speakers um, have difficulty. Okay, so Today's plan, there are two objectives. The first one is to share techniques for teaching students to hear and produce intonation patterns. And the second one is to share some uh, techniques for teaching online. Okay, so cultural expectations. First of all, again, 
um, going back to the video, um, we talk about the importance of changing intonation. Because in the years of teaching, I found that students sometimes feel shy or awkward when they're working on intonation. And that's why the mirroring project is good because they can kind of take on another persona. But even doing that, sometimes they feel shy or awkward. And that's one reason why when I assign the mirroring project for students, I have them sh choose the person. And actually one of the most interesting students I worked with was from China. And at that point, I told them to choose a native speaker, but she chose an intelligible non-native speaker. So she felt more comfortable with that. The next one, um, some languages use a narrower range or a wider range than English. So I've had some Russian speakers that feel like, oh, when they use the um, North American intonation um, patterns, they feel weird because in their culture, that's something that um, may not be socially acceptable for everyday conversation. And then finally, the last one is intonation is closely tied to identity. And there are several studies that have looked at that. Um, and so because it's so closely tied to identity, then um, it also creates a kind of barrier for taking on this persona, so to speak. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. So I'm gonna talk about some techniques for intonation. And one thing in all of the years that I've been teaching that I found is that sometimes students have a hard time hearing intonation. In fact, in the teacher training that I've done, sometimes teachers um, and many native speakers have difficulty hearing intonation. And so I use a couple of techniques. One is humming and um, Andrea talked about humming in the, the video that she did on word stress, but just basically, mm -hmm. so using um, that for students to hear the pattern without having the words get in the way. And then the other thing is a kazoo. So um, I have my trusty kazoo here, which I carry with me all over the place. And when I'm teaching face-to-face, -face, I give students a kazoo and they really love um, working with it. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Um, the other two techniques, and I'll be showing you videos in just a second, but as I mentioned before, facial expressions. And this comes from, for example, I don't know if you've ever turned off a video and just watched people communicate with each other, but sometimes with the um, Big Bang Theory, I'll start by having the sound off and just have my students pay attention to the facial expressions and then um, tell me what they see going on. And especially for intonation, you can see a lot going on uh, with the face. Also, um, when people train to be receptionists, they're told to smile when they answer the phone. So when you say, um, good morning, Colleen speaking, can I help you? If you don't smile, if you just say, good morning, Colleen speaking, um, then you're not going to sound very friendly. And um, of course, people are going to be satisfied. The other thing is what's called a head voice. And this is something that I learned um, from working with um, people that teach singing and music. Um, in teaching intonation, I've taken things from drama, music, you know, lots of different areas. And um, I don't show this in the video, but one thing that I have students do that really, really helps is first I'll have them say the word hi um, in just a, a flat, unfriendly voice. So like this, hi, hi maybe loud and monotone. Then what I'll do is I'll have them put their uh, hands behind their head uh, on their neck like this. And then as they say the word, bring their hands over their head like this. Hi, hi. So the idea again, which comes from singing is that um, by making that vowel really long, because one thing about intonation is that it's tied to stress. And if you have a short vowel, 
you're not going to have much variation. So if I say hi versus hi, and then also if I do this, I can feel it in my head, in my face, and in my head. And you'll um, see something in just a, a minute that gets at that. Okay? So, um, kinesthetic feeling and seeing. Another technique that I use to help students to actually feel pitch because, again, several students in my years of teaching have said, I don't understand what pitch is. Um, they don't really get it. And some students just start getting louder. They just say hi in, um, instead of using their pitch. So we're going to take a look at a couple videos. This is a student of mine from Turkey. And in the first one on the left, we're going to see um, how she is able to feel the change in pitch. So go ahead. Okay, and now friendly. Hi. Okay. Actually, the second way doesn't sound friendly to me. You're moving your, your hand, but I don't hear it friend, uh, okay. as friendly. Hi. Okay, so can you remember here, um, uh, again, take your Adam's apple, and, uh, and actually women don't have as strong an Adam's apple, but go up and down, so like this, hi. Hi. There you go. Okay, and then also seeing. So again, uh, paying attention to the facial expressions. So on the right, we'll see that. So for this, let's look at, look at my um, facial expressions. So the first one I say, can I help you? Can I help you? Okay, the second one, can I help you? Can I help you? Okay, okay. so let's do the first one together. Can I help you? First one is four sharks, strong and robotic. Yes. Can I? <laughs> so, can so I, imitate it. Okay. Uh -huh. Can I help you? Exactly. Okay, and now friendly. Can I help you? Can I help you? Can I help you? Okay, and actually the first time when she was trying to sound unfriendly, you can hear a little rise in her voice at the end, but the idea is the face. So they say that um, communication involves tone, the actual words, and um, body language. And the actual words make up a small percentage of communication. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. So one of the things that I like doing with my students, um, whether I'm tutoring them online or live, is warm up activities. And this I will include in the packet. And so just starting by using individual words and then um, using phrases so that they can feel how their pitch moves up and moves down. So let's look at the next uh, video, the next slide. And um, the first one, uh, so Aiten is practicing uh, one of those exercises with me. So uh, like this, stop doing what? Stop doing what? And you can hear it here. Okay, can you try that? Stop doing what? Stop doing what? Stop perfect. doing what? That's perfect. And now, um, falling. Stop doing that. 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 Perfect. Stop doing that. Yes, you can see yeah. Aiton is very, very motivated. And um, so she wants to keep doing it over and over again. So sometimes I have to stop her and say, okay, that's enough. You got it. Okay, but on the other hand, um, let's take a look at the um, video on the right and let's see what happens here. Can I do it? Sure, you try it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you mean? Is that what you mean? Is that okay. what you mean? Yes, um, pretty good. Um, 
you need to um, slow down a little bit. Is that what you mean? Oh, Is okay. that what you mean? So okay. it's actually also the the rhythm. So is that what you mean? Is that what you mean? Okay. Is that what you mean? Is that what you mean? Is mm -hmm. that what you mean? Is Perfect. that what you mean? Is Good. that what you mean? And now the opposite. Come down. Is that what you mean? Is 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 that what you mean? Is that what you mean? Like this. Um, yeah, it's close. Is that what you mean? Is that what you mean? Okay. Uh, so like this. <laughs> is, that, is that what you mean? Is that what you mean? Is that what you mean? Is yes. that what you mean? Okay, so one thing is, um, again, getting back to authentic communication, I think warm-ups are good, but um, sometimes if students just read something from a paper and they try it on their own, like she did, she was excited. She said, okay, let me try it. Um, she wasn't able to put um, the correct stress and intonation. But still, I give her credit for, for wanting to give it a try. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. So this is actually from Judy Gilbert. And um, in terms of intonation, this gets back to the mirroring project that when, when teachers and students think about intonation, questions are a big part of it, and that's true. Um, but also what's really, really important is for students to be able to speak in thought groups. And at the bottom, you can see there's this pyramid that uh, Gilbert suggests. So starting with a thought group, then the focus word. So for example, in the question, how do you spell easy? Easy would be the focus word. E would be the stress syllable. And then the peak means the peak vowel. So how do you spell easy? Okay, so, um, and in a um, chapter that she put in, uh, a book called Myths About Teaching Pronunciation, uh, Gilbert said, one myth is that intonation is hard to teach. And I would say it is, but it isn't. And so um, I'm going to show you some things that you can do that can make a difference. Okay, so let's go on. So one thing is that um, with the mirroring project, also, um, I will have students after they've looked at the video to come up with a transcript. So um, Andrea, yeah. So basically you take their transcript, turn it into a poem with one thought group per line. Keep going. Then they write the emphasized words in capital letters. Next, they read each phrase, look up and say it to you, um, sometimes using a rubber band because again, the vowel length is very important and then using the, the pitch movement. And uh, a couple of caveats, students shouldn't read. So this is um, going from having their script to actual uh, free speaking. So if they just have their transcript and they say, um, is that what you mean? Um, it's not the same as if they have it and they look at you and they say, is that what you mean? Um, okay, so. Let's take a look at the next video. So this is Aiton's uh, transcript and I'm not gonna uh, stay here long, but I just want you to see what it looks like. So let's go on to the next uh, video here. So here she's practicing and I'm calling this meaningful practice uh, because um, she's basing it on a TED video that she saw. And so um, let's listen to her practice together or practice with me. Okay. Uh, you know the situations when we get an evaluation from our boss and she tells us 47 things that we, uh, we, do, we do really awesome and one opportunity for growth. Uh -huh. And all we can think about is that opportunity for growth. Mm -hmm. It also works like the like the same in her research. 
when she asks people about love, they tell her about heartbreak. Oh. When she asks people about belonging, they tell her their most excruciating experiences of being excluded. Um, the last part I missed. So when she asks them about love, they tell her about heartbreak. When she asks them about what? Why she asks people about belonging? Oh, belonging. Okay. Then they tell her their most excruciating experiences of being excluded. They tell her uh, their most what experiences? Excruciating. Oh, excruciating. Excruciating. Excruciating okay. experiences of being excluded. Okay, so we excluded. Okay, got it. Up here. Um, um, she... Yeah, so one thing that I wanted to say is that um, this video, what I'm having her do now is do that exercise, but I haven't seen the video. That was a video on vulnerability by Brene Brown. So to make it more authentic communication, she watches the video, she takes a section, and she comes up with her notes, and then she says it to me. And if I can't understand her, then I stop her. And of course, in this last part, uh, the word excruciating was not clear. And so then we, I stop her and we work on that. Okay, so um, the next thing is just to show you what her speech is like um, when she's speaking, uh, naturally. And um, again, if we had more time, I would have you in the chat box, but just notice not only in terms of intonation, but what would you say are the two biggest areas that get in the way of her communication? One thing too is this is Skype. Um, I'm sorry if sometimes the, the sound is not good, but go ahead and listen. This is very short. Um, it is, uh, there isn't any um, scientific fact how to establish grid uh, in case of uh, your answers. Um, okay, um, but there is one research. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, stated that growth mindset is very important. Whenever uh, you fail, you mm -hmm. have to find uh, how I could learn from my failure. Okay, so um, the two things that I identified, and one thing is that she's working with me because she wants to apply for um, jobs in an English speaking country. And we're starting to work more on intonation now. We were working on word stress before. But one thing that I notice is oftentimes she has this rising tone. Um, also, her fluency. Um, she uses ums so much that it sometimes drives me crazy. And so I've been um, working with her on trying to eliminate the ums and also to have more of a jump up, step down intonation pattern. So let's go to the next video. And um, I've been having her do impromptu speeches. So I give her a minute to take some notes. And then um, I have her, I give her two minutes to do the speech and then uh, depending on how well she did, I'll have her do it again. So this is the second time that she's done this speech. And um, the question is um, three uses for a pencil besides writing. So let's listen to her. And oh, one thing is that when I put up my hand, that means she said an um. So here, um, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not only focusing on, or I mean, I'm giving her feedback on her ums. Okay, so go ahead. This is for a pencil besides writing. Okay, now I should start now? Okay. Yes. Okay. In this coronavirus outbreak, you can use your pencil for protecting your health. I know that now we are in the shock. How? You will ask me how. Because whenever you want to scratch your face, instead of using your hands or something else, if you are uh, sure about the hygiene of your pen, mm -hmm. you can scratch your face with your pencil. It is so common in my culture. And besides that, there are some 
interesting uses of pencils, scratching your face. One of them is you can use a pencil by putting it in the middle of a notebook or in, in some pages of a book. Whenever you read, you want to go back, come back, and you type instead of searching uh, on which page I'm, I was left, then you can find it easily because your pencil is there. So you can use it as a page separator. And okay. the final usage could be, it is a great place. Okay, yeah, so there's just a little bit more, but um, uh, so that's one of the things that I try doing with her and, and do with students is take them to something that's a little bit more um, authentic communication. Although sometimes it's, it's hard to um, give feedback on intonation, but at that point, uh, I always record the sessions and so we can go back uh, later and we can talk about if there are difficulties with intonation. So to end with just a couple of tips about virtual tutoring. So the first thing is make intonation patterns simple. Um, you can get really fancy with intonation, but just keeping them very, very simple. So I have a uh, picture here. Hopefully you can see this. Um, basically, if I want her to draw an intonation pattern. The next thing is, um, well, as I said, use hand-drawn visuals because it's too hard to, to do it on the computer. The next one is when I'm showing intonation, I try to show it from right to left because she's facing me. And so that makes it a little bit tricky, but after a while, you get used to it. Um, encourage self-monitoring. So uh, as she's listening or as we're going back, I'll try to get her to notice uh, her intonation issues. And then finally, use the chat function as a whiteboard. So if there's difficulty, and everybody I think knows this. So to sum up, Okay, so help students understand the cultural significance of intonation. Um, teach intonation in a multi-sensorial way. So hearing it by using a kazoo or humming, feeling it, uh, using your, having students feel their larynx, don't call it your, their larynx, but feel, have that go up and down. And also the difference between pitch and volume and then to actually pay attention to and see facial expressions as people are speaking, whether it be in a video or real life. Teachability, the prosody pyramid, and the last one um, for fluency. So intonation, thought groups, um, prominence, this is also closely tied with fluency. So working on these areas can really um, make a big difference. So um, here's my bibliography and that's it. Sorry, we're a little, oh, I guess we're only 331. So if you have any questions, um, I don't know, I'll turn it over to Andrea or Patsy and they can help us wrap up here. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna stop Colleen's video. I'm just gonna pop up my, um, my PowerPoint so we can go over a couple of things as we're wrapping up, but as if people have any questions, if you want to type them in the chat box, we can take just one minute. I know we're, again, we're a little bit over. So if um, people need to go, that is no problem. But I do want to share some of the upcoming things that we have. Uh. And I really don't want to share this from the beginning. So. Well, I can just talk about it if you want to take a second to. Oh, there we <laughs> go. It. Oh, you got it. Go ahead. We'll just flip through. Um, just some additional resources. The Atlas website has an ESL resource library, and one of the topics is pronunciation. Um, so you can find some additional pronunciation resources there. And again, we will be sending out, I will be sending out um, a PDF of my PowerPoint and of Colleen's as well. And then 
the YouTube channel with Minnesota ABE Professional Development. There are more videos on teaching pronunciation, so definitely do check those out. And then if you have any follow-up questions, and I see there are some there's some chats, so if people need to go, no problem. Otherwise, Colleen and I can stand for a couple minutes and answer some questions. Or don't hesitate to email either of us. We're happy to answer questions about intonation or pronunciation, especially with Colleen's um, vast experience with teaching and teaching online in particular. I mean, we're incredibly lucky to be able to have her as a resource. And I'll just add my thanks to both Andrea and Colleen for joining us today and for sharing all of your experiences and so many videos. We, it's one thing to read or talk about it, another to see someone doing it and doing it online uh, is just so timely. So thanks, Colleen, for, for capturing and for your student for agreeing to, to yeah. show uh, her work, which I'm sure uh, is never easy to um, say yes to. So I appreciate everyone's willingness to be a part of this. We'll stick around for a couple minutes. Um, I did put in the chat box the link to the Resource Center as well as the YouTube channel for other videos around pronunciation. And oh, Andrea, one, yeah, go ahead, Colleen. Oh, sorry. Um, one more thing uh, mm -hmm. I forgot to mention is that uh, if anybody is interested in using PRAT, P R A A T, it's um, pronunciation software. I have a couple of videos on my um, PowerPoint that I've got here on my own computer and I could show those. It's really useful for showing the difference between volume and pitch. Mm, okay. and so students can actually use the software. Thanks for putting that in there, uh, Patsy. And yeah. they can actually see if they're using more volume or using more pitch. Oh, wow. Okay. That sounds like a great tool. Thank you. Um, and what we, what we could do, Colleen, is um, if you want to re- um, upload your PowerPoint with oh, those yeah. additional slides. Um, yeah. I can send it out so that people send out the link. So instead of getting a PDF of your PowerPoint, people can get the link, um, mm -hmm. which would mean that they could be able to would be able to view it and they could see those videos. Okay, that sounds yeah. good. So we can we can do that instead of sending instead of sending PDFs. There's so many videos. We'll send out send out. Um, a link to the PowerPoint so people can go back and see them because it's That's a so idea. wonderful to see that pronunciation instruction in action. That's great. Thank you so much. So Gail, if you caught that, we're going to actually send a different version than the one you already have. We'll send a new one out. All right. You will get CEUs. Those of you who um, uh, were able to join us will get CEUs for your attendance today. And of course, uh, links to the, to the PowerPoint and um, if you have any other questions, I'm going to stop the recording, but please feel free to stick around if you would like to chat with Colleen or Andrea further. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>